So Apple added some writing tools, Apple intelligence, if you will. It's been sprinkled about. Basically, it's available now in 15.2, basically in any sort of text box you can type text in, it seems. So for example, here's a note here, and I could click this little button here to show the various tools. Like I said, this is available about anywhere you could imagine. If I come over to the dev tools inside the browser, I can even select some text I typed here. I can then right click on this and I even have the writing tools right here. So I can use the same tools here in just about any text box in Mac OS. All right, so let's start out with this though. If I select this table of data or this list of data here from the CDC, I haven't really read through this to figure out if this will produce a table or not, but if I paste it over here in a note, and if I think maybe this could be presented in a tabular format, then if I right click here and come down to writing tools, or if you just select text here and wait for this little icon to show up, you'll get some choices here. And one of those is an option here for a table. So take the text that I selected, turn it into a table. So if I run that, you can see it kind of glows the text until it's done. And there you go, it turns it into a table. And that actually looks kind of useful to turn this data into a table. I hope it's accurate. I haven't double checked to make sure it is, but it seems like it's a reasonable way to transform the data here. It looks like we've got stuff about 2021, 2022 in here as well. And so maybe it makes sense then to talk about the difference between the two years. So that's one feature. Right, so let's say I've got an email I'm typing here this time. Maybe I want to reword it. I can, again, just select all the text here, wait for that little orb to show up. And then inside of here, maybe I want to make this sound, I guess, concise. That might be a good way to summarize things here. They've got too many words. So, of course, it will cut down on the text here, make this less verbose. And I can back up if I want here with a little back arrow. Maybe instead of concise, I want it to sound more friendly. I could go with that option. Though I think this sounded kind of friendly to begin with. but. And of course, the most ridiculous one that I think is almost absolutely useless is to turn this into a more professional email here. So I'll click that option. So these are just pre-canned options. They're probably basically a little prompt behind the scenes that specifies how to rewrite the text here. Yeah, your support is greatly appreciated. Instead of being friendly, it's now sterile and professional. All right, so I'll revert that. So yeah, basically what I want to convey here is when you have that little orb show up and you show the writing tools, these are basically just pre-canned prompts. You can also just describe the change you want yourself here. So if I wanted to do something like make this make this one sentence instead, I can do that and hit return here. And that should work. That should stay in the world of Apple intelligence, if you will. Yeah, there you go. So that's one really, really long sentence, but I guess it fulfills the task of rewriting it as I requested. So another thing you can do here, if I paste in a different version of this email, I've got some misspellings in here, like grabbing, for example. If I want this to be spell checked and fixed here, can just select it and then come over to proofread. Again, that's going to be some sort of prompt here. Watch the text here. You can see how it glows here with grabbing and after, so it fixed those two words that were misspelled. Or I could turn this into a list here. So yeah, a list format instead. Or let's go back to the example of the CDC data. And when I want to show the writing tools here. Let's say I want to make an image for this. Whatever it means to make an image for it, let's just try it here. When I run that, it should in a moment here tell me, yeah, it tells me right here it'd rather use ChatGPT instead of the Apple intelligence model. So I can then request a switch to using ChatGPT. And then it's prompting ChatGPT to make an image for me. And I should get that back in a moment here. So yeah, you can actually generate images with ChatGPT here and actually inline them right into your document. Of course, that assumes that the document you're editing supports the ability to have an image embedded inside of it. But if it does, well, that's actually kind of a useful feature to have. Now, when it comes to ChatGPT, if you put in Apple Intelligence and Siri and open up the settings for this and the control panel, if I come down here under extensions and ChatGPT, so I had to toggle this on here to use ChatGPT, and then I signed in, I have a Plus account. I'm assuming you get some minimum number of requests, regardless if you have a Plus account or not. And then down below, I just noticed this. There's a setting here to allow me to turn off the stupid prompt to switch over to ChatGPT. I'd rather just have it do it there. So I'll turn that off while I'm in here. All right, so if you want to just jump straight to ChatGPT and you don't want to try the Apple Intelligence model at all, if I were to select this text here again and then show writing tools here. So if I do that, down at the bottom of the tools is a compose option. This should basically say ChatGPT. I don't know why it says compose here. This switches you right over to ChatGPT to begin with. You have a little prompt you can add here. So I could say, make me an image. And then I could submit that immediately. And then I'm bypassing the Apple intelligence models entirely. 
So my assumption is use the Apple intelligence models. If you have some sort of simple summarization or listing or maybe proofreading of some text here, and then anything beyond that, I'd probably switch over to ChatGPT. All right, so that makes an image. And then, yeah, it's got some follow-up prompts that are suggested here that I could follow up with, like highlight changes in the leading cause of death in the image. All right, let's just try that and see what happens. I think that's what it means. Do I have to return here? Okay, I had to return there. I thought it would just do it automatically. I guess I get to modify that prompt suggestion if I want to. Thus, I have to hit return. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is the amount of time it takes to generate this. And especially when it's text that it's generating, I'd like to see the text as it's typing. Now, in this case, I believe it's making another image, so it makes sense to have to wait for that. But in the case of text, I'd like to see the text type out, just like if you're on chatgp.com. Yeah, so there is actually some text that's generated here. It'd be nice to see that generated in a streaming fashion so I can start reading it and I'm not just waiting for maybe 20 or 30 seconds for the entire response. Now, if you want to avoid showing the writing tools entirely, don't use the show writing tools menu entry. Instead, come right down here to compose. And one thing I might recommend is to add a keyboard shortcut to open up compose if that's something you want to use frequently. So you could come into the keyboard settings here, control panel for keyboard, come under keyboard shortcuts here. I believe you're going to find this up in the menu here for the writing tools. Yeah. So look for compose in here. So there's a compose writing tool here. That's basically what you need to set up. So come over to the keyboard shortcuts in Mac OS, come down under app shortcuts, and then you'll need to add the application here. Or I guess you could make it global as well if you want. Let's do all applications for this one. We'll add a new shortcut here. The menu title is just compose. Now, hopefully that doesn't overlap with some other menus that you might be using. And I don't know, maybe I'll do, I don't know. I'm just coming up with a key combo. I don't think I'm using, I have a lot of keys bound to different things. So. Essentially, I'm going to bind a C key to this. All right, so my bad. I missed the dot, dot, dot on the end of that. That's why that's not working. Now, if I select my text and hit my shortcut here, there you go. I can pop up in the chat window, the compose window, and just go right to talking to ChatGPT. That is much better than needing to click that stupid orb or right-click to open this up every single time you want to use it. All right, now, maybe for one last example here, Obviously, using ChatGPT can be helpful beyond just simple text and images and writing emails and documents. It can also be helpful to write some code here. And I think this is starting to become a useful enough feature that you could use this in script editor, or in my case, I've got script debugger here. So I'm going to ask it to basically help me write some Apple script so I don't have to do it. So I've got a pre-canned little prompt here. I've got PowerPoint opened up over here. And I want to get the title of this window here with Apple Script. So I've got a prompt here that I just typed in right into the surface where I'd normally put in Apple Script code here. I can then invoke my shortcut here, Compose opens up, and I can say, write me Apple Script. One thing I would like to have is the ability to have some pre-canned prompts so I don't have to type out this every single time. I'd like them to maybe be tied to the program too. Or more realistically, I'd like this little feature to be able to figure out, I'm asking a question inside of, script editor or script debugger. So why don't you just automatically assume I want Apple script if I don't ask for anything else? And then I could just hit return right here with this empty prompt here because I've already got the prompt over in the text editor. Anyways, let's go ahead and run this here. Again, I would like to see a streaming response where the chunks are actually being written over the text in the editor, though I guess that would be a personal preference because maybe you want to review it first. So over on the right here, you get some text and some explanations. And of course, if I like this, then I can then replace the text that I had with this, which kind of works, except for the fact that there are explanations in here. It's kind of sad that these explanations aren't commented out because then there are other explanations down here that are commented out. So it's kind of weird that it didn't figure out to add comments to all of this. So I got to come in here and comment this out here. And I think the ending explanation as well. I'd like to see some polish basically put on the ability to get help writing code, if you will to be a little more smart about the context in which I'm asking for code. For example, if I'm over in the browser and the dev tools, it'd be nice if it automatically knew I want JavaScript. And then if it needed to explain anything, it would automatically turn those explanations into JavaScript comments. That would be great. So anyways, let's just compile this and test to see if it works here. Come over here. Yeah, there you go. It actually works. So in script debugger, you can see the variables that I set here for Windows title. Well, that it set here for Windows title. So it set window title right here to the name of window one here from PowerPoint. And you can see over on the right here, the variable win title. It's got presentation one, which is the title of the window. So yeah, this could be helpful for writing some Apple script. Though, like I said, I think that the workflow needs to be a bit better. 
I think it needs to have a streaming response, something more like what I actually do here. I had my own helper for this a long time ago where I just invoke a shortcut after selecting text here. It does everything for me. You can see it streams the text in. I do have a problem sometimes getting it to not add extraneous ending statements. I need to fix my prompt for that, but I can do basically the same thing with my helper here. And I get the exact same thing here, the window title with presentation one. So I'd like it to be more like the workflow I had set up, though I'd like to be able to use it with these writing tools and ChatGPT that are just baked into Mac OS. So maybe in the long term, I don't have to have my own little helper here set up to do this. All right, so I think that's enough for now. Overall, this is a nice feature to have. It's nice to have the integration into all the applications I use. But honestly, I'm not that impressed with the interface and the workflow yet. I think there's a lot of improvements that have to happen to make this a productive workflow. For example, keyboard shortcuts. I mean, I guess that helps a lot to do that. But even after you set that, I'd like to see the streaming responses. And maybe I'd like to have some sort of better understanding about the context in which I'm asking a question. So I don't have to type a second question here in this box right here.